All right, so let me bring up my presentation again. All right, all right. Here we go. So I want you to calculate, I want to find a probability if you're totally guessing. How many were you expected to get right? If you were just totally guess, how many were you expected to get right? That's one thing we're going to do tonight. Then we're going to find out um, if you're totally guessing, what's the probability you get exactly five questions right? Versus what's the probability of guessing you get at most five questions right? And the other one is, what's the probability of your guessing you get at least five questions? <coughs> so by the end of the night, we're going to answer all three of those questions, all right? That's the goal of the night. And we're going to talk about this thing that's called a binomial distribution. So in a binomial distribution, here are your properties. In a binomial distribution, a binomial experiment, or it is any experiment in which the outcomes can be classified as what we call success and failure. So the reason it's called binomial, the reason it's called binomial, and we have these things that we call experiment, they're called experiments because you actually have to do it. What you just did was a binomial experiment. What was a success when you did your game, when we did that game right there? What was the success? Guessing. Guessing it correct though, right? Yes. The correct answer is success and failure was do getting it wrong. Does everybody understand that? Right. So success, we're going to denote this as what we call the term pi. We're going to call it pi. Success is denoted as pi. And pi is going to be a probability or a percent. It's a probability. When we played the game, when you, when you just played that game, what is the probability that you guessed any one question correct? Can anybody tell me that? For instance, on number one, what's the probability that I guessed the right answer? Anybody can tell me that? One in 12. Right one, in 12. Again. one in 12 is you got an answer correct. What's the probability you actually guessed it right, though, at one question? How many choices were there? One, one there in five. Four. One in five. Why one in five? One in five. So, good. There are five choices, right? Five choices. Only one of those choices is correct for each question. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. So we're going to call this probability of success. The probability of success for our game, also known as pi. That was equal to one in five, also equal to one in five can be written as a decimal is what? What's that decimal? 0.2. 0.2. That was a 20% chance you guessed any one question correct. Everybody got that? We call it pi. <laughs> the probability of failure. The probability of failure is what then? 0. 0.8. Four out of five. Eight. It's 0. 0.8. It's four out of five or 0. 0.8, right? And here's how we get that. We use the complement. We use not pi. So if, if success is pi, which is 0. 0.2, well, success and failure both have to add up to 100%, right? <laughs> so if this is 20%, how do I find the other one? Well, I do it like this. One. Minus, which in this case, one minus pi, one minus one fifth would be four fifths, which is also 0 0.8, 80% chance you got it wrong. Everybody understand that, right? Yes. Anytime you play, so here's what happens then. When you do a binomial experiment or any kind of, when you look at a binomial distribution, the first thing you always have to have is some kind of percentage. And the percentage is going to break down into a success and a failure. And when you add up success and failure, success and failure should always add up to 100%. Everybody got that? So always add up to 100%. Because I'm calculating every success and every failure, right? Yes. Now, the number of trials for the, 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 number of trials for the experience, here's what, we played, here's what we did. We looked at a certain number of questions. How many questions did I look at? 12. 12 total questions. That's what we call our trials. We call that, that's what we call our trials. So the number of trials for the experiment are fixed. Were we going to answer more than 12 questions? Yes mm -hmm. or no? Were there more than 12 questions to be answered? Yes no. or no? No. no? no. Were there less than 12 questions to be answered? No. no. We answered 12 questions. Everybody got that? That value, yes. that value in, is called N. That value is called N. So N equals your trials. In our case, our trial was the number of questions. 
and we add that equal to 12. So this is another property. So we have two properties so far. First property, two outcomes, success and failure. Success is called pi, failure is called one minus pi. Second outcome, there's a fixed number of trials, which we call n. <coughs> third outcome, our third property, each trial is independent of the last trial. And remember, when we talked about independence, when we talked about independence, if something is independent in probability, what does that mean? You can, not multiple, it should be you can, you can multiply probabilities if things are independent. Independence allows us to multiply probabilities. Now, in this particular game you played, was question one independent of question two for you? Yeah. If you got question <clears throat> one right, did that, did that help you get question two right? No. If you got question one right, did that help you get, did that, uh, did that help you get question <clears throat> two wrong? No. 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 And that's because what were you doing the entire time when you were playing this game? Guessing. You were guessing. Now, if you had prior knowledge, would that be independent? No, you'd have more knowledge. But the reason I picked this particular game is because you don't have a lot of knowledge on these type of things, I got that. So you're literally guessing. And because you're guessing, trials are independent of each other, right? Trials are independent. And what we can do now is multiply our probability. And so the last part of this is this, because they're independent, and because you getting a question right has no effect on you getting the next question right, your probability of success will not change. The probability of success will remain constant. And these are the four, the four properties of a binomial distribution. First property, two outcomes, namely success and failure, are pi and one minus pi. Second, out, uh, second property, fixed number of trials. Fixed number of trials. You can't go past a certain number of things here. Third outcome, uh, third property, trials are independent of each other. This allows us to multiply, multiply our probabilities. And then the fourth thing is the probability for success is constant, which means that that probability would not change from, pro from, from trial to trial. That, pro that probability remains the same. If all four of those things, if you go through any kind of character <coughs> experiment and all four of those things hold, you have a binomial distribution. All right. All right. So let's look at our expected value and standard deviation. And remember, the other day we talked about the expected value and standard deviation from a random variable. A binomial distribution is a random variable. It creates a random variable. All right, it creates a random variable. And when we have random variables, remember we define them with a capital letter. So this is the capital letter we're defining with X. And we call this the parameter notation for a binomial. And in a binomial, here's how you notate it. If you know these two things, you know everything about the binomial. For instance, when I write this, it says X. This means follows or approaches or yeah, X follows, that's how we really say it. X follows, the capital B in statistics reserved for the binomial. So X follows a binomial distribution with N. N is your, N is your fixed number of trials. N is your fixed number of trials and pi is the probability of success. So if we're looking at it, what we just did, if we're looking at what we just did for our game, for our multiple choice test with 12 questions, each with five possible answers, or five possible answers, if you're totally guessing how, um, how many are you expected to get right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna denote it, we're gonna define it. So we're going to say that X follows a binomial distribution. Why is it binomial? We just went through this. Probability of success, 20%. Probability of failure, 80%. Two outcomes, success and failure. Second thing, we had a fixed number of trials. We had 12 questions we were looking at. Third thing, each question was independent because we were guessing. Fourth thing, because we were also guessing, our probabilities didn't change. So we met all four conditions. So here's how we write it as a binomial. X follows a binomial within the number of trials. Our number of trials here was? 12. And then 
P, the probability of success was? 0 0.2. 0 0.2. This tells me everything I need to know about the binomial. Because now I know that I had 12 trials, probability of success was 0 0.2. What's the probability of failure? 0 0.8. 0 0.8. If I know success, I also know failure. You got that? Likewise, if I know failure, then I also know success as well. Everybody understand that? So here's how we do this now. If we are totally guessing on this particular test, how many were you expected to get right? How many were you expected to get right? 2.4. Why? I multiply uh, 12 times 0.2. Why'd you do that? Because this is uh, from the formula, n times pi. Even without looking at the formula, why would you do that? That's a good, uh, I mean, that's the right way. That's the right reason by looking at the formula. But if we have the formula sitting there, why would you do that? Let's talk about that real quick. Let's flip a coin. Let's flip a coin 100 times. Flip a coin 100 times. If I flip a coin 100 times, is that a binomial experiment, yes or no? Yeah. How do you know? Probability. Tell me why, tell me why, it's a, tell me why it's a binomial experiment, flipping a coin 100 times. It's heads and tails. So first thing, we have two outcomes. What are the two outcomes? Heads and tails. If I want to look at, so if I look at heads or tails, right, I need to define a variable first. Let's look at the number of heads. Flip a coin 100 times, look at the number of heads. Mm -hmm. right. Now, success is a what then? A head, right? Mm -hmm. And failure would be a? Tails. Tail. We know the probability of success would be what? Probability of getting a head is? 50%. Probability of failure is also what? 50%. 50%. First, uh, first, uh, the first property of a binomial is met. We have two outcomes, success and failure. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. Second outcome, fixed number of trials. How many times, how many times will I flip that coin? 100. 100 times. 100 Six times. Does everybody understand that? Second outcome is met. Third outcome, or third, I'm sorry, third property. Third property says that each flip is independent of the last. True. Is that true? If I'm flipping a coin, does the, if I'm yes. flipping a coin, are they independent? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Will the probability change on each flip? Will the probability change? No. Potentially, no. Come on. No. Come on. It all depends there, right? So they won't change. Yeah. So have I met all four properties? Sure. Yes, yes. It's a binomial experiment. Now, intuitively, Max, let me ask you this question. If I flip a coin 100 times, how many heads am I supposed to get? 50. Five. I'm supposed to get 50, or I'm supposed to get 0.5, or 50% of those should be, uh, should be heads, right? Mm -hmm. Intuitively, that makes sense that you should get 50 heads if you flip it 100 times. Mathematically, then how am I getting that? I'm just taking the probability of success, which is 0.5, and multiplying it by the number of fixed trials, which is 100, right? 0.5 mm -hmm. times 100 is equal to what? 50. 50. Every, every binomial experiment is how you find the mean or the expected number of what you're going to get. So in our case, we would take what? Our mean would be, our mean would be our N, which was what? 12 times our P, which is 0.2. And we already said that's equal to what? 2.4. 2.4. Now, can I get 2.4 answers right? Yes or no? No. No. You can't get 2.4 answers right. But mathematically, the answer should be 2.4 is the mean. The expected number of right is 2.4. So what does that tell you? If you got more than 2.4, you did better than the mean, right? And if you got yes. less than 2.4, which a lot of y'all did, by the way, <laughs> you did worse than the mean. All right. So the next part talks about the variance and the standard deviation. Then. And what we do here is the variance and standard deviation. Remember, our standard deviation we're really interested in. And the standard deviation, do you remember what that standard deviation is? What is the standard deviation? How far you are from the mean? The average deviation from the mean, right? Mm -hmm. So the average deviation from the mean is found like this. You take n times pi. What is n times pi called again? What is that called? The mu? That is the mean. That mu. is the mean, right? So you take the mean, and to figure out how far you vary from the mean, what's one minus pi called? Variance? Think about that again. What's one minus pi called? Oh, the failure. The failure rate, good. So look what you're doing. You're taking your mean, and you multiply it by your failure rate. You take your mean and multiply it by your failure rate. So literally what it's going to be is this, and when I do this, that's not the app I want. Hold on. 
I'm taking 2.4 and multiplying it by 0 0.8. 0 0.8. And I get this right here. This is the variance, 1.92. The problem with the variance is that it is a squared value. The squared value. It makes no sense. So I need to do what to that 1.92? Square root. Take the square root of 1.92. And this gives me the standard deviation. That is the standard deviation. So I'm going to deviate from the number of questions that I got right by about 1.4 questions. And literally what that means is that I can get, on average, I'm supposed to get 2.4 questions right, right? But that means I can deviate from that about by about 1.4. So that means I can either add 1.4 or subtract 1.4. And if I subtract 1.4 from 2.4, I get one. That means I get one question, right? <coughs> if, I add, if I add 1.4 to 2.4, I get four questions right. So really and truthfully, you people that got four questions right, you're within the normal standard deviation there, by the way. You're within that normal standard range of deviations. And mathematically, you did what you were supposed to do. So find the standard deviation, then we do, by the way, this should be just sigma x, not sigma squared. That should be just sigma x, not sigma squared. So sigma x is equal to the square root of n p or n pi and one minus pi. We said that's 1.38. This right here was equal to sigma squared was equal to n pi 0.8, that was equal to 1.92. If we take the square root of 1.92, we get 1.38. But finding the mean, the standard deviation of this distribution is very easy to find. If you know what two things, what do you have to know here to find those two things? The trials. You have to know n and, the and p. P. And that's why we write it like this in parameter notation. This parameter notation gives me everything I need to know, right? If I know this, I can find the mean and the standard deviation. So that's the first part of this, finding the expected value. So we're able to find our expected value easily. We know what, we should get how many questions right on average? On average, you should get 2.4 questions right. And it's gonna deviate by standard deviation, which is 1.38. Now, Here's the second part then. So we know how to find expected value and standard deviation. Now, I want to know, here's what I want to find. I want this test with 12 questions and five possible answers to each question. I want to find the problem of getting exactly five questions correct. Five questions correct, is everybody understand that? So let's set this up. Here's what we have up here, this is table. Right, and this table, X represents X equals a correct question. X equals a correct question. Y'all okay with that? X equals a correct question. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. So what does this zero mean? Zero, zero right answers. Zero, zero right, right answers, which feel y'all had, right? Mm -hmm. Then we have one, in, one right, two right, three right, all the way up to what number? 12 correct, 12. right? You understand that? So here's how we can set this up. Here's what we know, by the way. We know that all of these questions are independent of each other. Does everybody understand that? They're independent. And because they're independent, what can we do to probabilities? What can you do to probabilities? Multiply. You can multiply. multiply. Here's what I'm gonna do. I have a 12 question test. It was my 12 questions. Here's question <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Y'all okay with that? If I want to get exactly five right, if I want to get exactly five right, exactly five, that means I get these questions right, right here, right? What do you know about the other questions? They ought to be wrong. They ought to be what? Failure. These questions failure are wrong, good. 
So what's the probability that I get five questions right? How do I calculate that? What's the problem when I get the first question right? One out of 12. Try it again. That's one question. One oh, one out, of five. one out of five. Which is what we said was going to be what number? Point two. Point two. What about question two? Let's probably get that right. Point two. Point two. Point two. Point two. Point two. Here, right? yeah. mm -hmm. What about the rest of them? What do they have to be? Zero or eight. Point eight. Why point eight? Why point eight? It's eighty percent chance of failure. 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 That means that yeah. all of these represent what? All of these represent failure, right? Everybody yeah. understand that. So exactly five right means I got these five right. And how many did I get wrong then? Seven. Seven, seven wrong. Everybody understand that concept, right? So <laughs> can I calculate this probability right here? How do I calculate this probability? What would I do? Get point eight times seven. Not times seven. That's point eight. Point eight times seven means I'm adding them. I'm actually oh, one. You square it to the I'm fifth power. So you do that one to the I'm fifth power. Good. So look here, yeah. what you're doing right here, the red part to do the point two. So how many point twos do I have? Five. 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 So that's point two to the fifth. Mm -hmm. Fifth power. Point eight to the seventh. And I'm going to multiply that by point eight to the seventh. Seventh. Power. So look here. To guess exactly five questions right, to guess exactly five five questions right, let's calculate their probability now. I need to do 0.2 raised to the fifth power times 0.8 raised to the seventh power. Here's what I get. You know what that number is? That number is basically when you write the number, it looks like this. It's point zero 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 six six seven one. So the chances that you're gonna guess five correct out of twelve questions like that is already telling me that's going to be what? This number, is that a big number or a small number? Very small. Actually, it's a number very close to. It's actually yeah. this number in, in statistics. We actually call this number zero. It's basic zero. But remember, because it's probability, we have to have some kind of chance. So there's a chance that you can guess it, but it's very hard to do. Which is why nobody really guessed five questions correctly. I understand that. Now, but the problem with this though is this right here. I'm looking at this as I got the first five right. And then the next seven all were what? Wrong. Wrong. Is that the only way to do that? No. No. Right? As a matter of fact, did anybody get the first five right? Or did anybody get um, Raj and Josh? Y'all got four right, right? Did y'all yeah. get the first four right? No. Nah. <clears throat> no. It ain't working like that, right? Mm -hmm. There are different combinations that actually occur here. Does everybody understand that? The question is how many combinations are there? So... Let's simplify this process. And instead of looking at 12 questions, let's assume there are only three questions on this test. And instead of trying to get exactly five right, I want to get exactly two correct. Everybody got that? So we set this up in a simpler, in a simpler sense. Three questions, one, two, and three. Exactly two. Here's how we write that, by the way. Exactly two means you're finding the probability that x equals two. Correct, correct. What does that last one have to be? Wrong, right? Does everybody see that? So what does this say? I got question one right, question two right, but question three, I got it wrong. wrong. And is that exactly two correct? Yes, right? But what's another way we can do this though? Question one, I got it right again, but this time I got question two wrong, but I got question three right. So here I get point two, point two, point eight. What's another way I can do this? Wrong, right, right. 
Thank you. So I get uh, wrong, right, right. So that would be like this. Blue. Red, red. So I get, now I get 0 0.8, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Is there any other way for me to get exactly two right? No. No, these are all the ways I can get exactly two right. Is everybody saying that? There's only three ways to do this. And literally what I do, I just move the failure. I move the failure spot. Does everybody see that? The failure moved to the, uh, was that the third question? Then moved to the second, then moved to the first. My question is this, have these probabilities changed at all? No. Is this probability up here different from this probability right here? No. No. Exact same. no. Everybody understand that? As a matter of fact, what is it? What's 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.8? This right here, 0 0.032. The probability for any one of these is 0 0.032. Yeah, got that? And the nice thing about that is if you come back over here, then we're going to have more than one combination of these, by the way. Does everybody understand that? Because now we can move all of these successes and failures around. The question is, how many of those am I going to get? There must be some kind of formula that can help me figure out how many of those I'm going to get. Is there a formula? Yes. Yes, there is. Have we talked about that formula? Yes. Yes, we have. <laughs> One is called the combination formula. We can use our combination formula to figure out how many combinations we're going to get. And I'm introducing you to a new variable, which we call X, but X is equal to the number of successes. X is equal to the number of successes. And so here's what NCX says. NCX says, what does N stand for again? The number of trials. trials. I, I've reduced the number of trials to three questions here because I want to look at the simplest form. Does everybody understand that? So my NCX here would be three, three trials, choose. How many successes do I want? Two out of three. So I want two. So three, three trials, three trials, choose two successes. <coughs> if we go back to our original question, how many um, successes do I want? Five. How many five. trials do I have here? Five out of, five out of 12. So it'll be 12C5. You got that? 12C5. Now, again, I want to work with the simpler part first, and then we'll come back to this. <coughs> so 3C2 is equal to, look what it says is equal to. It's equal to 3 factorial over X factorial. What's X here? Two. 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 So two factorial times three minus two factorial. <clears throat> what is three minus two? One. That's just one factorial. So when we do this, we get this right here. That's equal to at the top, three factorial is what? Three, three times three two. Three times two, one. two, one. What is two factorial? Two times one. Two mm -hmm. times one. What's one factorial? One. Just one. Look what cancels. Cancels, cancels. What are you left with here? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. What does that three represent? The three different what? Combination. Three combinations. Combinations I have sitting here. Does everybody see that? It represents the three combinations I have sitting here. Everybody understand that? So this is showing me. This is the three combinations I have sitting here. So we have over here, what do we have? We have 12 C what? So let's go ahead and do that one real quick then. On the top, I'm going to have what? 12 factorial. 12 factorial over. 5 factorial. Times 12 minus 5 is what? 7 factorial. 12 factorial, that's your N. N factorial, 5 factorial, that's your X. This 7 factorial came from where? Number one. Uh, oh, number failure. Failures. Good. And minus X. And actually, you're right. It is the number of failure. Do I realize what you're doing here, by the way? What this is saying is you have 12 Just different ways. Look, what you're doing is you're really saying this has 12 different ways we can rearrange these things. And what, look at this mm -hmm. first part. There's 12 different ways to rearrange the first number. Mm -hmm. Then you move down to 11 ways, then 10 ways, then 9 ways, 8, 7, all the way down to one way, right? Mm -hmm. But then you have five successes that are going to be the successes are indifferent of each other. They're the exact same things. But you can 
meaning that meaning you can change this right here five different ways. Once you set this one though, you can change this one four different ways, right? Ways. Then you have three, two, and one there. Do y'all see that? Mm-hmm. Then your failures, you have how many failures? Seven. So you Eight, can seven. Seven, seven. seven, six. This is where the formula is coming from, by the way. Do y'all see that? Mm-hmm. So when we do this then, how does this simplify? Let's go ahead and simplify this then. We have a uh, 12 times 11 times 10 and times 9 <laughs> times 8. And then we can we can take out the, the 7 that, factorial. 7 to 7, yeah. yeah. <sighs> yeah. So here, we have 12 times 11 mm-hmm. times all the way down to uh, 7 times seven. times all the way down to 1, right? On the top, then we have, look, 7 times 6 times all the way down to 1. These are going to do what to each other? Cancel each other. And then I have, still I have 5 times 4 times, four times, times three. 3 times 2 times 1, right? Mm-hmm. We can look for factors here. Look, you 4 have times three. 3. What's that? 12. 12, uh, 12 11, you have a 10, right? 5 times 2. 10. It's 10. 10, right? 10 goes out. Yeah. So you have 11. You nine, eight. At the top, nine and eight and seven. Nine, seven. Eight, 11 and nine, eight, eight. I'm sorry. 11, nine and eight. So this would be at the top. 11 times nine times eight. So you have at the top. 99 mm-hmm. times eight. 99 times eight. <laughs> Y'all think alike. <laughs> 792. 92. There are, what that means is this, and you guys, there are 792 ways that we can rearrange these combinations successes and seven failures. Hmm. 792 wow. ways. But the good thing about that now is this then. Since there are 792 ways we can do that, there's actually, how many times will this show up then? 792 times. Mm-hmm. That's it. So the actual probability then becomes this. 792 times, let me do it again, 0.2 raised to the fifth times 0.8 raised to the fifth. There's actually a eight percent chance that you can guess this correctly that you can guess exactly five correct i got that i feel like that's off i feel like i did something wrong. i think it's to the seven you think i knew it was wrong thank you <laughs> that's not what i got earlier when i did it 792 <laughs> times two raised to the fifth thank you and it's 0.8 raised to the seven oh, what happened in that thing 792 times 0.2 Raised to the fifth times 0.8 raised to the seventh. There it goes. That's better. Should be a little bit. It was like a three percent. Yeah, it was like a five percent chance. Yeah, puts a pence. Yeah, it's a five percent chance. Though. That's that's still a pretty good chance. You could not a pretty good chance, but I mean it could happen. It could happen. I got that. It can happen. So, coming back to this example, or real quick, coming back to this example. Here's how this works. Then, and I want to develop the actual binomial formula. So look, we said we had how many combinations? Three combinations of this particular number, right? Mm-hmm. And that number is, so we do three times 0. 0.032, we get 0. 0.096. So the probability you get exactly two questions right is actually equal to 0. 0.096. 0. 0.096, that's the actual answer there, right? And here's how we got that. The actual formula is this. We did three C2. What does that represent? The number of ways to move the successes and failures around, right? Times. Point two raised to what power? How many successes did I want? Two. Two, so that's point two raised to the second power, and then times 0.8 raised to what power? One. The one power, because you only have one mm-hmm. failure left, right? This right here leads us to our binomial formula. And the binomial formula says this. Here's how we write the binomial. If we're using just general terms, the first part of the formula if we're using the variables that I've given you today, which are n, c, x, and pi. What does pi stand for again? Which value is pi Excess. over here? That will be 0.2, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. 0.2 is pi. What is 0.8 going to be called then? 
If I I'm mine. One I'm minus pi. One, one, one minus pi. Sure. Good luck. Mm -hmm. like the you binomial really formula works like this. It is n c x. Give the number of combinations, right? N c x times pi. But that's pi raised to what power? What power do I raise pi to? Two. We need second. a general formula. We need to a general formula, which means we need a variable. What variable am I going to raise it to? The number of successes. It's called what? X. X. You call X. NCX gives you it all, by the way. X is the number of successes, right? So that's pi raised to the X, X. power. Pi raised to the X times what? One minus pi. Minus pi. One minus pi. Raised to the what? This is the harder one, to the one minus N. X? Not one minus X, you're close. Mm -hmm. Look, X represents success, Failures. right? X minus, minus X. One minus N. N minus X. Say it again, N minus X. N. N minus X. Why is it N minus X? And it was the failures. Yes. Why is it N minus X? Why is it N minus X? Number of trials minus. Oh, uh, minus. Uh, the success. No, no successes. Trial, yes. Good. Failures. <laughs> yes. So, so listen, your number of failures is equal to the so number of trials is, for instance, three, right? Mm -hmm. And you have two uh -huh. successes. How many failures do you have to have? One. Four, right? One. One. So if we go to the next one, if we know the number of trials is 12, and you have to have five successes, how many failures will you have? Seven, Seven right? Seven. That's mm -hmm. N minus X. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Hey, y'all have just developed the binomial formula. You have actually proved the binomial formula. You just did that. So when we look at this then, right, our formula was set up like this, which would be 12C5 times 0.2 raised to the what? Fifth. 0.2 raised to the fifth times 0.8 raised to the what? Seven. Seven. Here's the actual calculation for the binomial. That would give us the probability of, at x equals five. This is the probability that x, it's the probability that x equals five. That's the probability of x equals five. And so when I calculate that, I get this 12C. Where am I going? 12. It came my thing up on me, man. Math. Hey, I do not know what my stuff is anymore. Anyway, 12C5, we said it was 792, right? 792 times, we already did this. We said it was something. Uh, let me see something else. PDF, N, T, X. Yeah, that's what we got earlier. 0 0.053150 um, I'm going to show you how to do this in Excel now, in Excel. So we know the answer is going to be this in the end. 0 0.05. And what that really means is that, look, on this chart that I've given you right here, if you were to write the probability, here are all the probabilities for each particular value, number of successes. The probability to get exactly five successes would be equal to this right here. 0 0.053. And as a matter of fact, guess what I could do? I could go through here and find the probability of getting exactly four successes. I can go through here and find the probability of getting exactly three, exactly two, exactly one, exactly zero. I can find any one of these probabilities by using this formula right here. What's going to change? Well, will the 12 change at all? If I'm trying, let's say I'm trying to do, for instance, I want you to find a probability of getting exactly three. How would you write that? How would you write it for exactly three? X equals the three. X equals three, so mm -hmm. that's equal to what? That's 12 C, 12, 12 C three. three. Then what comes next? Two, time, two, 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 two times three, 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 three third power. And then point times eight to the eight to the ninth. Ninth. The ninth power. Here's the answer. <laughs> That's the answer. Twelve C three is point is twelve C three times point two raised to the third, point eight to the ninth power. You got that? You can do that for every yes. one of these particular things up here. 
Let's figure out how to calculate that now, right? So we're gonna go to Excel. We're gonna calculate between Excel. So let's go to Excel. Take over. This one I had Excel open. I can see my screen. No. No. All right, hold on. How about now? Yeah. Yes. Y'all see Excel open, right? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so look, in your Excel, here's how you use Excel to do this, all right? You have a formula in Excel. You have a formula in Excel. Try to make this as big as possible. Now let me make it big for y'all, or I will make it bigger. Then in Excel, you use the, use your equal, and you have the formula called, if you start typing B I N O M dot D I S, y'all see that? Binome D I S dot D I S. Everybody got that? Y'all see that one? If I want to find the probability of getting exactly five things, getting five successes out of 12 trials, exactly five successes out of 12 trials, here's okay. what I did. All right, here's what I do. Exactly five successes out of 12 trials. Look at the first part. It says number S. What do you think that means? Number S. Successes. Number of successes. How many successes do I want? Five. Five. Use a common X. Then Twelve. It the next part. Trials. Under trials. Are 12. Good. Twelve. Comma again. Then it says probability of S. What does that mean? <clears throat> Your failures? One, yeah, one out of failure. five. What's the probability of success? It's actually probability of S. What's the probability of S? 105. 0.20. 0.20. 0.20. Yeah. 0. Right? Because look, number of S's, okay. number of successes, trials. Oh, yeah. And the probability of success is 0. 0.2, right? And then the probability of success is 0. 0.20. Right. The last thing is asking you for is the cumulative. cumulative. And cumulative means this now. If you're, oh. finding, if you're finding exactly, if you're finding exactly, you're not going to do cumulative. Cumulative means up to and below. Is everybody understand that? So cumulative at five would mean that you're adding five, four, three, two, one, zero. You're adding everything in front of it. You got that? We just want, we, for exactly, we want just five. So because we want just five, we're going to set cumulative to false. That'll give me exactly five. So set that to false. And look what the probability is. There it goes. Look what your probability is. Your probability here is equal to what we found by hand a second ago, by the way. You got that? So this is the probability that x equals 5. That's the probability x equals 5. If I want the probability that x equals three, what would I do? Equals binomial distribution again. Number of successes here is going to be three, right? Number of trials is going to be well, well probability of success is still point two, right? Yes. Cumulative, because I want exactly three, I'm gonna set this to false. False. And there's your answer, 0.2362. Hey, are you surprised that you have a higher probability of guessing three right than you are five right? You shouldn't be. Why not? What's your expected value? What's your expected value? If you were totally guessing, what was the expected value again? Are you guessing? What was the expected value? What was our actual expected value? Do you remember what it was? It was, in, it was 2.4. Which number is closer to 2.4, 3 or 5? 3. 
three. So that's why you have a higher probability of it. If I want to do two, for instance, the probability that X equals two. That's equal to, again, equal by known distribution. Number of successes is two. Number of trials is 12. Probability of success is 22. Again, I'm to false. That's a probability of two. Look at the high, look at how much higher that is. Probability that X, X equals one. Binomial distribution. Um, number of number of successes. One. Number of trials. Twelve. Probability of success. Point two. Cumulative. False. Yeah, see that. As a matter of fact, let me do them all real quick. Uh, let me start. I'm not gonna do them all. Probability x equals uh, zero. Actually, I can't do them all. Probability x equals four. Probability x equals x equals five. I just want to stop there. All I'm going to do is go through this formula and change things up. I'm going to put a zero into there. Two, three. I'm going to put a four in for this one. And then put a five in for this. There. Now, real quick. So I'm about to stop after this one. I think we did enough for tonight. Hey, here's the probability up to five. I can find the rest of them one, too. Is everybody understand that? The next question says the probability of getting at, um, at most five. At most five. At most five means this. The probability that X is, is not a less than or equal. It's less than or equal to five. At most five means I can get how many? I can get five right or I can get four right, or I can get three right, or I can get two, or I can get one, or I can get zero. So it's any one of these probabilities, do you understand that? It's any one of those probabilities, everybody got that? <laughs> so here's how this works. If I want to find at most five, I use the binomial function again. And this time I'm gonna do, I want five successes. Number of trials is 12, wow. point two is this. This time I'm gonna set the cumulative to be true. True. Set it be to be true. I must not have set that to be true. Equals by no, let me try that again. Uh, five. So, well, two. Point two. There. Look at what it equals there. Does everybody see that, point nine eight. Watch what happens when I add up all these probabilities in front of it, by the way. If I sum up all the probabilities up to five, look what I get. So I get the exact same value. The exact same value. So look what's happening. What is less than or equal doing? It's adding up every probability that sat from five and in front of it. That's exactly what the cumulative is going to do. We will talk about the cumulative. We'll talk about the cumulative and more, pro and more um, binomial probabilities on Thursday, all right? Y'all got that? Y'all have a good night. All right, good night. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Jeanette, you still got questions about that um, no, stuff? I'm you have to... Yes, I do. Okay.